Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode. And today on our show, we have Marissa Arciola, the Senior Director of Mobile Customer Base Management Strategy at Altice USA. So today we're going to be speaking more about building data sets from scratch. So welcome to the show, Marissa. It's such a pleasure to have you today. Thanks for having me. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, definitely. Let's just go ahead and get started. Could you tell us more about your background, introduce yourself, and tell us maybe what led you to your role today? Sure. Um, So my name is Marissa Arciola, and as you said, I'm the Senior Director of uh, Mobile Customer Base Management Strategy at USA, and I've pretty much spent my whole career focused on the customer experience, on the customer journey at every company that I've worked at. And that means that no matter what title I've had, I've really been looking at how a customer is interacting with my company or not interacting, which, you know, may be a problem that I'm trying to solve. And then looking at the next best action that we can take as a company to keep customers happy, to keep them engaged. And it's something that's really important to look at at every point of the customer's experience with your company. And that means looking at data (laughs) and looking at data from many different sources to understand uh, what the customer behavior is, what the customer's expectations are, and to help them make decisions on what needs to be done to make a better customer experience. So that is something that can translate into changes with product, changes in website, changes in our communications, all kinds of uh, exciting changes. So I started at Altice in 2018 before our mobile product launched. I was actually the third or fourth member of our team, which was a really cool experience. So I got to be a part of this very tiny team, which was part of a much larger company, Altice. And we were building and creating and then launching this new product. And so it's been great to watch it expand, to see it change over time and be a part of that experience. Now, of course, because we were launching a totally new product uh, that came with some challenges, particularly around data, which is why we're here, right? (laughs) So you don't have data until you launch. Um, In previous roles that I'd had, I was used to looking at customers interacting with our product, customers interacting with our websites, taking that data and then using that to make decisions. But when you're launching something, you don't have customers yet. So you, you have to look at a different way to build out your decision-making process and to build out your data. Yeah, definitely great insight. And you clearly have a lot of experience with the work that you're doing right now at your current company. Today, the big topic is just regarding building these data sets from scratch. And so for you and maybe the people that you work with on your team, what are some big steps and practices that come with building data from scratch? Sure. So when we were building the mobile product, we obviously didn't have the data. So we had to look at creative sources to use to make our decisions. So we started by looking at surveys that we had launched and focus groups. We also looked at benchmarking for other carriers, other wireless carriers, looking at what other companies that have a similar business model are doing and trying to gather information in that way. Once we started, we also took the data that we had and we decided how we were going to structure it and what was the most important information for us to collect. Once we had that, we were we were taking those pieces of data to make decisions for our next steps on how to build out the product. So at the risk of sounding a little bit hackneyed, when you are launching something, you don't know what you don't know. So what's I think most important is to be very flexible in the way that you build things and the way that you look at your data. So you kind of have to start at a very high level and then let the information that you're gathering paint the picture for you and then direct you. It's almost like when you're divining for water, (laughs) you have to let the data drive you. It's almost like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. You know, the way I like to start, which I think is pretty normal is by defining the edges of the jigsaw puzzle. And then from there, taking the other pieces and seeing how they fit and building inwards. So it's similar when you're building out structures for data like this. The only difference is that you are moving in a car, you're building this jigsaw puzzle at a high speed and it's a very bumpy road. So you very often have to do adjust some of the work that you've already done with the new information that's coming in. I have some examples of how we did this. I think a really good example was when we were looking at our disconnection data. So churn has been one of my big focuses, keeping churn down. And in general, I think it's just interesting and important to look at why customers are leaving you because it gives insight into what areas for improvement there are in your company. So obviously when we were getting started, we didn't have anyone disconnecting. We didn't have 
any customers. I've said that before, but we knew what we wanted to look at. We knew that we wanted to understand why customers were leaving, when they were leaving, things like this. So we set up data points that we thought would be useful and we, we let things roll. But once we got started, we, we realized that there were a couple of things that needed adjustment. So first, just to give some context in case you're not familiar with the wireless industry, if you want to disconnect with your wireless carrier, you do not in every case need to tell your wireless carrier that you're severing that relationship. If you do not have a contract, you can take your phone number and your information to another carrier and tell them that you would like to start with them. And they will go and broker the disconnection with your previous carrier, which is great for the customer. It's easier, but it can be a challenge for the previous carrier. So at Altif Mobile, we really pride ourselves on giving our customers complete control of their experience. So we don't have any contracts, which means a number of our customers can simply leave without telling us exactly why. Again, this is something that we think is good for the customer experience, but not great for us. So once we realized the volume of customers that were taking this route rather than reaching out to us and disconnecting, uh, we had to pivot a little bit in how we were understanding why customers were leaving us. So we leveraged our disconnection survey, which we also had going in market just uh, as best practice. And we use that a little bit more. So we refined it, we targeted different questions based on different segments that were coming in. Additionally, when we were looking at the data, uh, we realized that while we had set things up in a way that we wanted to receive them, the agents who were processing the disconnects were not necessarily using their systems in the way that was giving us the cleanest data. They were trying to process the disconnects in a way that was fast and easy for the customer. They were we're trying to do their best job and the way that we had set up some of our systems maybe wasn't ideal for them. So we had to adjust some of our processes there in order to get cleaner data. And I think that these are both really good examples of how when you're building data from scratch, you come in with an idea of what you want, but you have to adjust based on what happens when you are in reality. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's such a great business approach to kind of figure out maybe why customers are leaving just to be able to improve the product or the business in general. So um, that's a great practice yeah. to kind of have in the future as well. And since you and your team are really working to create data from scratch, really, is the data often messier or um, just because it's being created from scratch or does it seem cleaner? What do you kind of think about that? Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question. So on the one hand, I think it's as messy as any other data, <laughs> but in some sense, it's a little bit cleaner because you are able to structure it exactly the way you want. So because you're building it from the very beginning, it starts out in a cleaner fashion. On the other hand, as I mentioned before, you may not be getting exactly what you want from the get-go. So in the example of the disconnection survey and our frontline disconnect data, Data results, you sometimes have to marry data from different sources. And at that point, you need to make sure that you are leveraging it in a way that makes sense because you want to compare apples to apples, not apples to watermelons. So the disconnect survey is taken at a very different time in the, the customer's life cycle a few days after they've disconnected compared to the actual information coming from our frontline disconnects. So the timing is different. The sentiment of the customer is different. The fact that they're taking it on their own versus telling someone, uh, the fact that they are giving it versus it being interpreted. These are all things that you have to take into account when you're leveraging different data sources. So in that sense, it's a little bit messy, but in terms of how you structure it and because you're building it slowly, slowly, it's a little bit cleaner. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you had also touched on a bit about the challenges that you kind of face with either the data or just working with customers in general. How do you kind of ensure that there is customer retention and they'll just keep coming back and working with your company? Well, I don't know if you can ensure retention, although I'm certainly trying, <laughs> but that's a great question. Uh, I think what you need to do and what I always try to do is to focus on what your individual customer segments might need and what their challenges might be, making sure that you either alleviate any challenges before the customer gets to them through education, through better explanation, through through better products uh, or through better services. Or if there is something that can't be avoided by making sure that your customer 
service representatives are able to help the customer with whatever problem they have. And that comes with improved tools, with improved training. Yeah, definitely. Great explanation. And what is kind of your favorite part about the line of work that you're doing right now? So what I love about this kind of work is that I really get to learn every day. I get to learn about every single part of the business from the point where a customer comes in, working with our sales team, working with our e-commerce team, through all of our billing systems, through all of our customer care systems, through all of our communication and marketing. So it's all of the, the front end and also all of the back office stuff that's happening. I really like that I get to use both my qualitative and my quantitative sides of my brain and look at these kinds of data sources to make decisions. I love that I get to work with so many teams. It's really about learning and the fact that this type of role never has a day where you say, yes, I, I've got it all. I'm the expert in everything because there's always going to be a challenge that comes up once you've fixed something, there's something else to focus on. And that next thing that you're focusing on always has additional levels which you can dig into and learn more about. Yeah, definitely, especially in the field that we're working in right now, everything is just constantly changing and advancing technology-wise. So there's new things that are always coming up and new problems to kind of solve. So new things to learn every single day, as you had mentioned, definitely. I wanted to say yeah. thank you so much, Marissa, for joining us today on the Data Standard. We're trying to build a community of data enthusiasts and data thought leaders so that everybody has a place where they can connect and collaborate with each other. So what is something that we can do for you? Uh, well, everyone can go out and sign up for LTS Mobile. <laughs> Or, you know, I'm always happy to speak with people about new ideas in terms of uh, technology or retention or customer service. Or, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a musician, so I'm always happy to talk about music. And um, I actually am the president for a nonprofit about Syrian music. So if anyone has ideas about uh, Syrian music preservation, you can always reach out to me there. <laughs> Awesome. Do you want to talk a bit about the music that you do just on the side for fun? Yeah, sure. So I work with this foundation called Syrian Music Preservation Initiative, and uh, our mission is to uh, really to preserve and invigorate Syrian music. So we have a performance group, which I participate in, and then we work on transcriptions and education about Syrian music, which is obviously a subset of Arabic music. The organization has been around for a few years. This year, with the pandemic, we focused on really working on our digital resources and making transcriptions available, educational resources online. So we're really growing that side of the organization, which is exciting. And we're very happy that things are opening up so we'll be able to perform again soon. <laughs> so that'll be wonderful. You can find us on syrianmusic.org or you can follow us on Facebook. Yeah, that's a great initiative that you're involved in as well. So um, everyone, please take a look at the website. Thank you so much, Marissa, for joining us today. To our audience, for more information on the Data Standard, you can find us at www.datastandard.io, as well as on our LinkedIn and YouTube channel. So thank you so much, Marissa, for joining us. Such a pleasure to have you thank on the you show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely. And we hope to have you again soon. Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks again.